19 first alert weather and news apps. Just search Cleveland 19 in your app store. That's an excellent tool for when you do have to go to a safe place and you can't take television with you. So uh, you got your phone or your tablet for that. Also, if you don't have power, you know, these can be an excellent resource as long as they're fully charged. And those locations where we do need to be seeking shelter, Akron, Ravenna, Montrose, all of central and southern Summit County, central Portage County, lowest level of your home, most interior space that you can find, putting as many walls between yourself and the outside of your home as you can. John, is it possible to throw a track on here for us? I'm just going to close in on some of the areas that are getting hammered right now. Here's Hudson. They are right in the crosshairs of this thing as it races off to the southeast. And yes, let's do put another track on here and see where this thing is headed. So as we track this thing off to the east-southeast, uh, I'm going to put this on the leading edge. I'm going to head out. This storm system is moving at about 60, 65 miles an hour. Let's call it 61. And here are the towns that you're going to be expecting to see this line of storms come through. Kent at 606, Austintown by 637, Unity by 652, and then that's Newcastle, Pennsylvania that is in line with this. So as these race through the region, uh, they could uh, bring some gusty winds. In fact, they are, and uh, could bring some large hail. We've had some reports of that already. Down trees, down power. Uh, more than 15,000 already without power in this area, and we could see more power outages as we make our way through. Let's uh, go in really tight if we can. Can you? Can yeah, we go in super it, tight on this warning? Reading my mind, exactly. <clears throat> Let's go in and see where this is getting, uh, doing the most damage. Here we are, just moved through Peninsula, Twinsburg. You're now on the back edge of this. Hudson again. You're getting hammered hard. We'll head up to Auburn. We'll move across to Newbury, Middlefield, the cheese factory there I love, uh, Huntsburg, and this, uh, the, the lines in yellow, by the way, are severe thunderstorm warnings. So severe thunderstorm warnings will continue through this region through the course of the morning. But the chief thing we want to see is this red box, which is the tornado warning area. And again, only a Doppler indicated tornado, but even when it's Doppler indicated, it's time to head to the basement, head to that interior room, a powder room, something with lots of walls between you and whatever is outside. I'm gonna head right down to street level in Hudson. And uh, man, are they getting hammered right now. There you see the streets. The main thoroughfares, of course, are 91 and 303. And uh, all of the streets around that, all of the others are continuing to uh, be hammered as well. But with this thing racing so quickly off to the southeast, no surprise that um, the uh, watch or the uh, warnings to our uh, west have now expired, and we're now looking at um, the possibility of some high winds. And I'm going to multitask and put a track on this system too. This is the one that's coming through Akron right now. And again, it too is moving off to the southeast at about, uh, let's call it 60 miles an hour. So Akron, you, Lake, Alliance, Salem, Lisbon, and Unity are all in the path of this storm as it continues off to the southeast. What's on your mind, Sam? I, see, I know you have, whoops. I am just checking our uh, NWS chat. That's our service where we can chat back and forth with the National Weather Service. Uh, looks like we have a brand new severe thunderstorm warning that has just popped up moments ago. Uh, this is for Mahoning, Portage, Stark, Summit, and Trumbull County until 7 o'clock. So basically what the Weather Service is doing is they're going along this entire line of thunderstorms that's moving through Northeast Ohio. They're going along this entire line and they're issuing severe thunderstorm warnings for all of it. So all of this has the potential to turn severe if you're out in Trumbull County, Southeastern Ashtabula, Mahoning County, also included in the new severe thunderstorm warning. They're just going to warn all of this, but along the line, there may be little spin-ups, which is why we're not just concerned about the severe thunderstorm warnings, because sometimes these can verify as tornado warnings. We sometimes see those brief spin-ups. And of course, we do still have a little tornado warning here in effect for portions of Portage County and also down into Summit County. This is in effect until 630. So Ravenna, I mean, I, I know I keep saying this, but it's knocking on your back doorstep. Shaler's 
Hughesville, Manaway, just some areas where we need to be seeking shelter, lowest level of your home, most interior space. As this moves east through Ravenna out to Palmyra, Newton Falls, eventually we may see warnings issued for these locations, but it's just not there quite yet. So we're going to watch it as it approaches Trumbull County. And if you're waking up with me right now, and let's say Cleveland or North Royalton, Strongsville, the severe threat for you has essentially ended. There's still some rain and storms back to the west that we need to watch, but the worst of it has moved through. So it is Akron East that I'm watching closely right now. Geauga County, uh, south of Chardon here under that severe thunderstorm warning. Ashtabula also in a severe thunderstorm warning box right now, south to Trumbull and Mahoning counties. And then again, we still have the tornado warning that we're watching for you in Summit County and over into Portage County. Medina County, the threat has passed for you. You're no longer under any kind of warning. Uh, there's still a little box there. They've still got the polygon up for southeastern Medina County, but the worst of it has moved out of your area. So right now I'm just concerned about Akron north through Stowe into Ravenna. This is the main threat area. We could go street level, John, if you want, and uh, we can pick out some neighborhoods where Sounds good. maybe out ahead of this main line so that we can let these folks know exactly which areas east and southeast of Streetsboro we need to be seeking yeah. our uh, our safe spot. This is 44 here, 14. This is uh, moving through Streetsboro now again. And so if you're out ahead of it, if you live east of Streetsboro, that's exactly where we need to be going into our safe spot. And Ravenna, I've got my eye on you because if this is verifying as a tornado or even if it's not a tornado, it's still crazy high wind, possible 60, 70 miles an hour. Kent, this is also knocking on your back doorstep. I've got a Kent State grad here uh, to my right, so she knows exactly where that is. If you're here, Kent State, we need to be going lowest level of our home, most interior spot uh, that you can find, putting as many walls between yourself and the outside of your home uh, as we can. John, do we have anything new into our NWS chat? No, nothing okay. new. So Last post was at 609, which is where we are now. And uh, the uh, it simply says that um, there's going to be an expiration on the tornado warning for Medina and Summit counties. But okay. You just pointed that out because um, it's pretty much through those counties. Yeah, our producer, Jake, uh, he also went to Kent, and he just got to my ear and said, hey, if you have kids who go to Kent State, call them, wake them up. I mean, a lot of times we yep. can just sleep right through these heavy thunderstorms. So uh, that's a great suggestion, Jake. If anybody you know who may be at Kent State, let them know that uh, they are under that warning and the threat is knocking on your back doorstep here. Notice you're yep. starting to get into the yellow and red, and that indicates the, where the worst of the weather is. Potentially 70 to, uh, we'll say 60 to 70 mile an hour winds or potential tornado. Portage Street here in Kent, uh, East Crane Avenue, Park Avenue. Avenue down to West Main Street over into uh, Steel Street East Erie Street again this is in Kent Terrace Drive Bryce Road Ardmore Drive out ahead of the worst of it again East Erie Street Terrace Drive Theater Drive just some wow. areas <clears throat> where we need to be seeking shelter this is moving so fast these storms are flying so after they move through the Kent area look they're already moving into Kent it is Ravenna uh, that is next in line. It looks like uh, we're still under that tornado warning until 630. Again, we're zooming into Ravenna on our radar. Not much happening right now, although I'm sure you can hear some wind and hear some rain. But uh, the worst of the weather is now to your west, and it's closing in on you. Head to your safe spot, West Highland Avenue, Washington Avenue down there in Ravenna. Yes. Did you say something? I, I said sorry, Sam. I oh, kind of zoomed no, no, out no, on you fine. there. And, uh, you're fine. Um, I, I needed to zoom in. Spruce uh, the Avenue. The point is that as quickly as you saw that storm uh, overtake Kent, yeah, it's that's flying. what's going to happen at, at Ravenna here. In about two more radar sweeps, mm -hmm. we're going to be looking at Ravenna covered in shades of orange and red and yellow. So this is the time to batten down the hatches there. Black Horse, you are just about to get 
creamed and it's just off on the northeast horizon. Uh, let's put another track on this, Sam, just to uh, keep an eye on where this thing is going and who's going to be next because the leading edge of this just keeps changing and it's uh, going to be hitting different places at different times. So here is, in fact, I'm going to put a sweep on this. Let's, let's take us right across the leading edge and let's drag it out and we'll take it out to about 60 miles an hour. It's about as far as I can go and uh, see what we've got here in the way of towns. Yeah, Ravenna, you're just about to be hammered. Okay, so it's 612 now, 613. You're a minute away from uh, getting the hammering. Warren, Youngstown, Poland, and again, Newcastle's over in Pennsylvania as is Elwood City. But um, that's just how quickly this thing is moving. This will be in Pennsylvania here in about 45 minutes. In the interim, we need to keep you safe. And uh, that's the reason why Sam has been admonishing everybody to head to the basement, head to an interior room in whatever dwelling you find yourself in, get as many walls as you possibly can between you and the storm, and uh, be safe. Because even though it's only a Doppler-indicated tornado, uh, Doppler it simply means that that funnel cloud, if it's aloft, could touch down, could touch down, and that could wreck damage as these things typically do. Large hail, also a part of this, some damaging winds. This is going to be one of those events where anything that's in the path of this storm gets blown away very quickly, especially anything that is of shoddy construction, any trees that are weak, any limbs that are weak, more power outages can be expected as well. And uh, this thing is just racing through. What we say it was going to be knocking on Ravenna's door? Well, here it is. Looks like it is just making its way into the town of Ravenna right now. There's 59, the main thoroughfare. Sam, um, looks like, yeah, and 14. Uh, interesting that out ahead of it, you can see no rain. And then just a few miles, I'm talking Boring. a few miles away, we get into this very intense stuff that is racing through here at about 60 miles an hour. There's a new sweep, and there's a result, mm -hmm. is the fact that now Ravenna is in the thick of things and is going to only get into more. You want to name some streets there, Sam? Yeah, so if you're joining us right now, west, I believe that's Riddle Avenue, down to Walnut Street, uh, Spruce Avenue, Crown Avenue, North Walnut Street, Grove Street, Murray Avenue. Go ahead and head to your safe spot, lowest level of your home, most interior room that you can find, whether that's a storage closet or a bathroom. You just want to put as many walls between yourself and the outside of your house as you can. Again, Murray Avenue, it looks like we have uh, Kent State. Thank you very much, Tia, letting me know that Kent State did send a safety alert to their students to let them know, and I guess the sirens were going off as well. So wonderful news that we're keeping everyone updated and letting them know, you know, it's 6.15 in the morning. I don't know many college students who are going to be awake at this time unless you're up studying for something really tough. So it's good that they send them those alerts to let them know. The tornado warning remains in effect uh, from Streetsboro to Ravenna until 630. But I think it's safe to say Streetsboro, Stowe, out of the woods is really Ravenna right in that area. If you're out ahead of it, if you don't have any rain yet, maybe you live in a mobile home out here in far eastern Portage County or maybe over in uh, Mahoning County and it's not quite to you just yet, you live in a mobile home maybe consider going somewhere safer. If there's a shelter in the area, a convenience store, somewhere you can go so that you're not inside that mobile home. Because I mean, we could be seeing 60, 70 mile an hour winds here. Garrettsville, Hiram, uh, pretty soon here in a couple of radar scans, Nelson, Mahoning, we're gonna be looking at uh, very, very high wind, potentially some hail torrential rainfall and it will start like that and it will be very very loud as well this is outside of the tornado warning but still certainly some very nasty weather here and then we get into the worst of it in the warning which is south of Hiram here in Portage County Ravenna until 630 there's another radar scan and again you can see it really just kind of overtakes you as uh, these storms are flying they're moving so fast 
59. Uh, Route 14 here. Here's a couple more streets. East Highland Avenue, Grove Street, Woodbend Road, Washington Avenue, Lincoln Street. If you know anyone who lives in any of these areas, you need to get to your safe spot if you're not there already because, I mean, we're just already getting hammered here. The outer edge of the warning goes out to Charlestown. And once again, I'm just to remind you that we are in Portage County here with this warning. If you're in Charlestown or just to the east of Ravenna, need you to be ready to go to your safe spot now as this is closing in on you. I'm hearing some chimes over there. Do we have any new? Going to check on it for you right now, Sam. Got a, um, yeah, nothing new. This is just a continuation of the fact, you know, those chimes go off periodically mm -hmm. simply because um, we want to keep you updated. And whenever we're under a tornado warning, a severe thunderstorm warning, the chimes uh, will ring in the background whether something new has been issued and it has not or if we're just continuing some kind of an issuance that include the tornado warning and the severe thunderstorm warnings that we're under right now. I'm dressed like this because I was going to be in the storm chaser, but <laughs> I'm glad I'm here on the uh, radar because this is the place to be. Uh, we're going to keep you safe right through the course of the morning. Don't worry about anything. We're going to be apprising you of any changes in the weather. Again, uh, Doppler indicated possible tornado. Doppler indicated because aloft we saw the winds. You know, Doppler is a beautiful thing. It affords us the opportunity to look through a, a cloud deck as if we were slicing a marble cake. And you can see any kind of rotation in there. So if this is a loft, it is uh, not going to be affecting us. And But we could see some large hail, and we have been seeing, uh, history shown us, some high winds in excess of 60 miles an hour that have come through the region. And there's going to be wind damage. There already has been numerous powdage, out, power outages in the thousands and, of course, down trees and uh, down limbs. I'm going to get back to the uh, radar. And, uh, Sam, you mentioned Charlestown. Well, here it is. It's just uh, right on the leading edge, and it's coming through right now. And if we head down to street level, now, these are not really heavily populated areas. Although Hiram, uh, earlier um, we talked about Kent. Well, Hiram's co Hiram College is also one where the college kids are probably asleep. Uh, Sam, I'm going to turn it back to you. Yeah, thank you so much, John. Again, he was just mentioning Charlestown on the outer edge of that warning. We're already thinking ahead in case this warning is extended uh, out into other areas. So Palmyra, Edinburgh, uh, Yale, again, some smaller areas, but we still want to let you know if you have family there. Rootstown, you're on the edge of this. This is coming your way right now south of I-76. We need to seek shelter, lowest level of our home, most interior spot, Cook Road. Okay, and I think we actually have someone on the phone right now in Streetsboro, Bob Bolden, joining us. And uh, Bob, I believe you headed down to the basement as soon as you knew that these storms were coming through. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, grabbed, uh, grabbed the kids, got them out of bed, grabbed some clothes and some water and headed down to the basement. All right, that's excellent. That's what we want to hear because that's the safest place to be. Now, I hope you're not still in the basement. Are you still down there? Because I think we're good to go. If you want to come out, you grab the kids. We go back out into the house and get ready for school uh, because the storms. Yeah, we're just, just wrapping up. Yeah, mom went up to start making lunches, and the kids are upset they didn't get a, a day off of school out of a tornado <laughs> warning. But, yeah, we're, we're leaving shelter now. All right, Bob, can you tell me what did you hear uh, and what was it like as these storms were coming in? Uh, we had some really heavy winds, uh, hard rain. We had, I think, a, a short period of hail. Uh, you know, I wasn't, uh, I was down in the basement not really looking out too much, but I uh, definitely heard, I think I lost some patio furniture. Uh, pretty sure I heard that blow off the deck. Uh, so we had some, some really heavy winds uh, come through and, and hard rain. All right, Bob, thank you so much. We're so glad that you're seeking shelter and that you guys are okay. Sounds like you were on top of it this morning, uh, knowing exactly what to do as soon as the storms rolled in. We appreciate you joining us this morning. No, no problem. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. 621, still showing you those warnings here. Again, this is all part, if you're just waking up with us, this is all part of a larger line of thunderstorms flying through Northeast Ohio. I mean, it's just flying through the Colebrook area into Cortland. Uh, it looks like Kate Miller, T is letting me know, she's our director. She says her family is in their basement. They live in Kent. 
So thank you very much, Tia. John, we could go into Kent if you want. We can show exactly uh, what's going on there. Again, still got that tornado warning on the southern end of this line of thunderstorms. Portage County, Ravenna, that's where the tornado warning is still in effect, but it's moving east, so you're almost out of the woods in Ravenna. Streetsboro, again, you're out of the woods right now. Cuyahoga Falls, uh, Brimfield, another area where we're A-OK -okay to leave that safe spot and come out as the worst of the weather has moved off to your east. Still coming down in Ravenna, though, as that warning remains in effect for about another eight minutes or so. Uh, again, Streetsboro, we're good to go. But out ahead of this, Newton Falls, Palmyra, just some locations. No warning yet, but I'm curious as to whether or not uh, they'll extend this. We'll find out shortly. We'll be watching for you, as I mentioned. It's all part of a larger line that goes all the way up into Trumbull County, where I don't want to leave you out. We still have a severe thunderstorm warning in place here. I believe that's in effect until 715 for the threat of strong winds on the order of 60 to 70 miles an hour. Andover uh, also seeing very nasty weather right now. The Champion area, this is another spot where bad weather is approaching you, okay, from the west. It's all moving east, so pretty much all of central and southern Trumbull County. Warren, we need to be ready for some nasty weather to move in. No tornado warning just yet, but you want to prepare for it, right, by being weather aware so that if a warning is issued for your location, you can quickly head to a safer spot. Youngstown. Also, no tornado warning here, but as I've mentioned, it's knocking on your back door. Some spots where we're good to go, we're done with the worst of it. Aurora, up into Cleveland and Solon, Twinsburg, we had very nasty weather this morning. The threat has passed for you. North Royalton, West Siders, now just seeing rain. No severe weather in the area at all. It's all moved off to the east. Now, what comes in behind that main line of severe weather it may be loud, it may be windy, we may have heavy rain, but I think the worst of it for now uh, is confined to the eastern and southeastern portion of our viewing area. Still have another six minutes on that tornado warning in Portage County. So Ravenna, again, we're under the warning for about another six minutes or so. We'll get word in just a moment as to whether or not they're going to extend that. Looking ahead in time, Mahoning County, be ready because if this holds together, this will impact you in Youngstown. I'm sorry, Jake, one more time. School closings are in. Okay, so you should be able to see those uh, school closings on the bottom of your screen. There we go. I see some of them now. Twinsburg City uh, schools looks like delayed two hours. Cuyahoga Falls also under a delay now, which is good news because, guys, Although we haven't seen a ton of rain that's just kind of sat in one area, uh, we have seen heavy rain. And we've had a lot of rain over the course of the year so far. So there may be some ponding issues out there, okay? Even though the worst of the weather has moved out for some of these areas where we have school delays, so good to give that water a little bit of time to recede off the roadways before we get all the buses out there. So I do like to hear about uh, some of those school delays Still got the tornado warning, Central Portage County until 630. We will let you know if they extend it out into southeastern Portage or potentially out into southwestern Trumbull. These are some other areas, Youngstown, where we need to be watching uh, for the threat of severe weather. <coughs> it's about 625. I don't believe we have any new information in just yet. Yeah, we have 16,000 now oh my to, uh, without power. And we also have Mike Fowler on the phone. He's a Kent State student. And he was, oh, we don't have him yet? Okay. I know he was battening down the hatches as everybody else was that was in the Kent area and in the line of these storms. But uh, so far, we've had only reports of high winds. We've had reports of some hail. We've had lots of downed trees and uh, power lines and of course the power outages uh, about which i just spoke so so far that has been the uh, case and that's great news because we can deal with high winds you can always clean that up and the heavy rains with some local ponding that'll go quickly as we make our way through the course of the morning
Sam, why, uh, you just uh, you just uh, took a look at the velocity field again? Yeah, and yeah. still no sign of any significant rotation. But like yeah. we've been talking about all morning, you know, they watch, they look at that line to determine, okay, are there going to be any brief spin-ups right. along the line, or you know, and it doesn't have to be a tornado warning, of course, to do damage. Straight line wind oh, yeah. can be every bit as. Awful, I am you know. amazed that the 61 mile an hour winds that we uh, experienced early in the wee hours of the morning at Cleveland didn't do more damage and at Elyria in excess of 50 miles an hour because uh, I there have been a history here in high winds where planes were over flipped at Burke Lakefront Airport but haven't had any reports of anything like that the worst that we've had is a number of down trees some power outages uh, well 16,000 without power is nothing insignificant and we've had reports of some hail as well did you get something new here Sam? it looks like they're going to allow the tornado warning in Portage County to, to expire. expire yeah well, that's so. great news okay and uh, boy, look how quickly this has moved off. It's flying. Guys, can we, um, can we head back to the radar for just a moment? I mean, it is just about out of the warning area on its way toward, well, sadly, Youngstown, but the uh, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania as well. Uh, this is moving out. Now, here behind it is the next line, and this is just um, a garden variety rain. Some heavy stuff here moving through portions of Sandusky, Norwalk, and Tiffin, and it too heading east at about 60 miles an hour. But if we open this up, take a look at the break we get in the action here. It is gonna be a break before the next round comes in, and that'll be later on this afternoon, Sam, as you pointed out. I'm gonna get back to the area that is still under the tornado warning for about a minute and a half longer. Then you'll see this red box disappear as uh, we uh, see this thing expire. And, oh, we do have Mike on the phone. Mike Fowler's on the phone. He's a Kent State student. Mike, uh, it's already passed through there, but as it came through, what did you find? Well, you know, it's uh, not every morning that you get woken up to a uh, tornado warning, but um, as I was... Uh, Thank goodness. Um, yeah, exactly. But um, as I was just looking outside my window this morning, um, it was calm at first, but then it just all kind of came down at first. The wind, the rain, it just all came in, but... Um, came to a safe shelter. Um, I'm actually inside our journalism building here in Franklin Hall um, on campus now. Um, we're, we're all on the lower level of the building and um, we're all in a safe location just kind of weathering out the storm. Yeah, you sound like a journalism major, Mike. Um, <laughs> you may be uh, here reporting on what's going on in the weather sometime soon. Yeah, maybe uh, glad, someday, we'll see. Yeah, glad to have you uh, giving us that report. I'm glad everybody's safe and sound. It just moves so quickly through that region and through the entire area at 60 or more miles an hour that um, once it passes it's uh, clear sailing in fact uh, are you able to look out a window mike uh i can look out a yeah i can look out a window real quick okay because uh, i've got a feeling all you've got is gray skies and you might not even have any rain down there that is accurate it's a little windy but other than that it looks like it's just gray skies yeah uh, and no rain at the moment. Yeah, we're, we're closing in on Kent right now, and you guys are uh, smooth sailing now. So uh, you've weathered the storm, and we're grateful for your report. And Sam, what have you got in mind? Do uh, you want to uh, Oh, the, time and the tornado that... warning has now expired. Yeah. That's great news. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. Thank you so much, Mike. We so appreciate you joining us. Glad uh, everyone down in Kent is okay. We just uh, spoke with our producer who let us know there is no damage in Kent. So that's excellent news there as well. And again, we don't have any reports of tornadoes touching down. We don't have any reports of funnel clouds. Of course, it's dark outside, so that stuff would be very tough to see at this hour, and it would likely be wrapped in rain as well. But we're not hearing any reports of uh, major damage, really trees down, and of course, the damage in some other areas from early this morning. But no actual tornado reports just yet. No verification. Right. We do still have the severe thunder storm warning in effect for Mahoning Portage, uh, northeastern Stark County and, and portions of Trumbull County. If you want to throw a time stamp here on the lower edge of that, uh, that line of storms coming through Trumbull and Mahoning, because it is going to be Youngstown uh, who, who gets it next. Yeah, let's, uh, let's put a line on this and we'll take it all the way through the leading edge and extend it out. Uh, this is going to go, okay, uh, Austintown, Youngstown, uh, Neshanuk 
Haven't said that one in a while. New Newcastle, Elwood City, and Butler. And of course, a lot of these towns are in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. They're not even in Ohio anymore. That's just how quickly this thing is moving through, Sam. So, um, hey, the gr good news is we've had no reports of any kind of severe damage or, more important, any injuries. And that is hugely something so for excellent. which we're grateful. Yeah. Okay. We'll turn things back to you, Tia, Brian. All right, thank you so much, guys. Of course, we've been talking to people on Facebook Live, talking to people on social media. A lot of people saying that they have power out at their homes, and so we want to talk to someone to tell us when that power may be restored. Yeah, Mark Durbin, of course, from First Energy, who is our go-to guy there. Mark, uh, what can you tell us? Uh, any idea specifically what areas were hit the hardest? We understand there are some significant outages in Cuyahoga County. Well, in looking at our maps, um, I would concur with that. It looks like Cuyahoga County got it the worst. Um, we're seeing about 13,000 customers out right now, <clears throat> and it's widely scattered. There are quite a few communities that are affected. I know we have about 3,500 out in the Parma area, but what that tells us is there's just a lot of locations that we'll ultimately have to get to. Uh, we highly encourage people to call us if they don't have power. It helps us process our information better. Mm -hmm. Always be aware of downed wires, especially with the kids going out for school and whatnot. When you're out walking your dog, look out for debris that's on the ground. By all means, call us as soon as possible, and we'll, we'll get those down wires taken care of. So we're probably going to see the numbers go up a little bit as people get up and get moving with their day, that type of thing. I know I'm sitting down here in Flintsburg, and we actually had a, a tornado warning that went off, so our kids are delayed for school for a little bit. So it was just a nasty weather front that came through. Looks like it's, if you could localize it, it's more east side than west side, but we, we again, have widely scattered everywhere. So the best thing people can do is just be careful as they get out and about. If there's power out at an intersection, treat it as a four-way stop. Give us a call so we know exactly where those outages are. And, and, you know, we saw this coming. We were prepared for it, and it was just a matter of how bad it was going to be. And it looks like it was pretty bad. So we'll get out there and get it taken care of. But it, it's probably going to be well into today, if not tomorrow, by the time everybody's back on, just because of some of the damage that is probably sitting around out there in our communities. Well, Mark, we know it's dark outside right now. We're looking at some live pictures all across uh, our viewing area right now. It's dark out there. What type of priorities do you have right now? How do you make sure that you go uh, in order of priority to get everyone's power restored? Typically, what we do is we look for the areas that we can get the most people back on in the quickest amount of time. Uh, we also look for emergency facilities to make sure we, we get those back on. That would be any hospitals, police stations, that type of thing. But but the issue with us is that if we can send one truck out to a repair and get 200 people back on, that's uh, a priority for us versus, let's say, there's just two people that don't have power because a tree came down on their transformer. I know that can be frustrating at times, but what we do is we look for where we can get the most people back on in the quickest amount of time, and more importantly, how we can do that safely, not just for our employees that are out working in this nasty conditions, but also our customers as well. Mark, you mentioned uh, the Twinsburg City Schools uh, two-hour delay. I also know Talmadge and Cuyahoga Falls and CVCA, which is across the street from Walsh Jesuit, down there. Two-hour delay. I really like that uh, two-hour delay deal that some of these schools are doing because you brought up a good point. There could be lines down. There's a reason why right. the power is out. Um, and as the storm moved through some of these communities, it's a good idea to keep the kids off the street. I know you don't want to tell the schools how to do their business, but this really is a good idea uh, when something hits right at the time that it did, that some of these schools are putting this two-hour delay in effect so that you guys can hopefully get out there and make sure that there isn't uh, that danger out there with kids and parents walking around trying to get on school buses. Exactly. It's all about the safety, especially for, for the kids that are out and about. And, um, again, that safety is uh, the highest priority for First Energy. When our guys go out, you know, they have safety briefings. They know exactly what to do, and they are prepared. They have lots of equipment on. But at the end of the day, every step you take out there when, when there's a storm environment is an important one. And you got to be thinking all the time, and that's what we, uh, our guys are just the best at that when it comes to getting power back on after a storm like this. All right, I have one final question for you. I'm looking at our uh, list right now of school closings since we're talking about schools. And I know you mentioned priority being of, of, of high importance and also safety, but there are several schools in Cuyahoga County reporting uh, no electricity right now. What's the process to make sure those schools get back up and running? Well, if, if there is a school building that, that is in 
fed off of a circuit that has an outage, we do not um, bump that up as a priority just because there's a school there, because there could be another priority somewhere else. So, and again, I know that's frustrating, but the bottom line here is that, that we have a process that we go through and, and we have people that go out and, and look and see what kind of damage there is, number one. Number two, we send a tree crew out there to clear out all the debris that could cause a problem. Number three, then we send out some linemen to actually get the, the, the wires back up or in, in, install a new pole, that kind of thing. So the best thing customers can do is just call us, keep reporting the information. We'll get out there. We'll get it taken care of. But, again, because there's just still some, some weather out there, the numbers could go up a little bit this morning before you really start to see them going down on our outage maps. Uh, our maps are refreshed every 15 minutes, so customers can, can look there to see what the status of the outages are. And, and again, it, it has the potential to be very frustrating, but we have a very safe process that we try to work through, and, and we're not going to deviate from that regardless of, of, of what the storm is. All right, Mark, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate it. You're always uh, right on top of it and uh, willing to help us uh, with our needs here so that we can get information out to the public. We appreciate it. Have a good day. Uh, I know it'll be a busy one for you. All right. Well, we've had Damon. Uh, he started in Chesterland yeah. with some uh, store damage there. He, then he went over to Lyndhurst where he was just pounded by rain, mm -hmm. and now he's in Beechwood. So we right. need to see what's going on there. Let's get to Damon Maloney, who's live in Beechwood right now with the very latest on uh, this weather that we've had, wicked weather that we've had. What do you have for us now, Damon? Yeah, Tia, you know, things have calmed down a little bit. We are now under an awning protected from the rain that's continuing to fall in this area, but at a much lighter pace. We're at the corner of Chagrin and uh, Richmond, right near 271, and you see the morning uh, drivers uh, having no issues as they get going this morning, but that really wasn't the case. Really about a half hour, 45 minutes ago, we were dealing with some heavy rains that were coming down in this area and also some gusty winds, but the good news, we're not seeing any damage reports in this area or hearing about them. But earlier this morning, around 4.30, we were in uh, Chesterland, and it was a different story there. Multiple reports of downed uh, trees and uh, down power lines with energy crews working to restore power to that area. And we also got video of a roof that was blown off of a uh, strip mall, a portion of that strip mall. The uh, owner of the strip mall was out there talking with us. He got a call from a neighbor about there being damaged and rushed over. And a significant portion of that roof will have to be replaced. And here's what he had to say about the damage. It's a weather event that can't be, you know, uh, clearly can't be planned for and, you know, has to be dealt with after it happens. And that's where we're at right now. How extensive is the damage here? The exterior of the roof was peeled off. The interior of the building uh, at this point in time is still, you know, uh, is still operational. But, you know, we need to be able to get it addressed uh, as quickly as possible. And that's what we're trying to do. And that was Bill Kirby. He is the owner of that strip mall. It's been there since the 80s, and he says this is the first time he's had to deal with severe weather damage. He pointed out a good uh, note that uh, this happening in the early morning hours, so a lot of people were inside their homes, not out running about, and, of course, uh, keeping tabs on things by watching us on air and online. So that's the situation out here in Beechwood. Getting answers, Damon Maloney, Cleveland 19. All right, Damon, thank you so much. Uh, one of the best things that I noticed uh, about this morning is that people are really listening to these warnings now. I think that's changed uh, quite a bit over the years. So, you know, I talked to 10 friends, all of them, in their basements right. uh, this morning out in the southeast side of the city because of our app and because yes. of the warnings that John and Sam were able to get out there. And also the tornado sirens uh, worked yes, in a number of communities work. that we've reported this morning. So uh, people understand the, the dangers here, and uh, they're, they're moving on. So and like that's you good. said, it's some good news there. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like meteorologist Sam Roberts has some good news as well. Sounds like some people are moving out of the watch areas, which is certainly okay. a good thing this morning. Good. Sam? Yes, that is excellent news. News, as you mentioned, the National Weather Service scaling back the Storm Prediction Center, removing people from the watch as the storms have moved east. So the farther west you go, you're being taken out of that watch. Lorraine County and west 
yes, it's raining there, and I know the weather not so great right now, but the severe threat for you has passed. Still under the watch in Ashtabula, Cuyahoga, Summit, Stark. A lot of you, our yellow polygons here, or our, excuse me, our pink polygons here, uh, we have are still under the watch, but I think as the morning progresses, they'll continue to scale that back from west to east. We still have one severe thunderstorm warning on the map. This is in Trumbull and Mahoning counties, and this is moving out of Champion, uh, moving towards Youngstown. So this is moving towards the Pennsylvania border. If you're traveling this morning towards Youngstown, just give it a minute. These are going to go out into Pennsylvania, and then we'll be done with the worst of the weather. For now, Vienna, Hubbard, these are some areas where, again, no tornado warning, but still very strong winds, potentially on the order of 60 to 70 miles an hour, and torrential rain. So it's, now's not the time to, like, go to the store, go to the gym. Even if you can wait to get out the door to go to work, just wait until these storms pass. They're flying, so they'll be out of here before you know it. Boardman, again, Youngstown, Beaver, Ellsworth, all some areas in the warning. The storms are to your west, so just wait till they pass. Give it about 30 to 45 minutes. They'll be out of there, and then you can move on with your day. Still have a severe thunderstorm warning here, southeastern Ashtabula County, but the worst of the weather has moved out, so you're fine. Get back out into the kitchen or the bedroom and do whatever you were doing. No need to be in your safe spot, although we still have a good bit of rain here. Cleveland, Elyria, Sandusky, Norwalk, and then down around Wayne and Tuscaroras counties. No severe weather but definitely some inconvenient weather for the morning rush. Please watch for areas of ponding on the roadways. I do not think we're totally done with rain today. We're going to have the rain that's around right now. I would say a chance of it through about 10 o'clock, maybe a few rumbles of thunder. The severe threat is diminishing. That's excellent news. Of course, we'll keep you updated if anything changes, but right now it's diminishing. And then in the afternoon, about one to five, some additional rain showers will cycle through, non-severe. And would you believe this? We're gonna go from tornado warnings in the morning to snow showers tonight. So some very interesting, but uh, not quite as threatening weather coming down the pipe. Time now, 643, and we wanna get you a check of the roads. Here is Denise Sorella with everything you need to know. Yes, Sam. Well, the good news is that for the most part during this weather event, we didn't see a ton of accidents and some of the accidents that we saw have already cleared out. If I back up a little bit here, you see in real time what the interstates are looking like around the Cleveland area. And the good news is everything is in green. That means two thumbs up uh, that you know, if you're heading into the Cleveland area or away from the Cleveland area, you're doing just fine out there right now. We do have an accident that's still out there. That's an I-90 eastbound at East 72nd Street. I'm told the right lane is blocked there. And then also, we've got some downed wires at Interstate 271 northbound at Brainerd Road and Cedar Road. Be aware that the left lane is blocked there. There are so many still trees and wires and power lines down, mainly in the Cleveland area some in the bath area it's just too many to uh, actually hit on during this traffic uh, hit right now it would take too much time so just be aware that as you head out onto the secondary roads you may encounter that uh, but overall everything in the Cleveland area interstates surrounding that area looking just fine let's get a, a check though on the power outages thousands of people were without power a short time ago what's the latest now Nicole yeah, we just actually heard that there is a company, uh, Ohio Edison um, team out there at, uh, Tia, what did you say from? Cedar and Warrensville from one of our viewers, so hopefully they're addressing that issue you were just mentioning. But we have been monitoring power outages across Northeast Ohio. I can tell you there's 15,507 customers without power right now. Most of that focusing in Cuyahoga County. You've got about 9,200 uh, customers without power there. And I would say Parma. Um, is seeing the largest number of outages. You've got about 3,600 customers in Parma um, without power right now. Most of these outages saying they're not going to be back online until at least 1 o'clock this afternoon. Um, now, I was kind of curious about Portage County because that's where we heard um, Kent, um, Streetsboro, where we heard um, about a lot of those tornado warnings and uh, we saw Kent State students seeking shelter um, in some of the buildings out on campus there. 
But well, I guess the good news is that in Kent, there are fewer than five customers without power. Um, we'll see how that changes as the morning goes on. In Ravenna, fewer than five. And in Streetsboro, in 56, we talked to a viewer, Bob, there who is in his basement in Streetsboro taking shelter um, during our 6 o'clock hour. So the good news is in Portage County, they're not seeing quite as many outages, but a total in Northeast Ohio. Um, oh, just updated. Here's the good news. 13,952 customers now without power, but most of the problem area is in Cuyahoga County. I'll toss it back over to you guys. All right, and certainly a lot of people may be heading out. This is the time where people start getting moving. Yeah. You know, you got to get yeah. to work. You got to be careful. Yeah, of course, we do have uh, those closings and delays for schools running at the bottom of your screen. So your child may not have to get to school just yet if you're leaving out. But if you are hitting the road, there's some things you need to look out for. Yeah, standing water. We just got the call uh, from ODOT saying uh, standing water everywhere. So yes. you got to slow down. You hit that standing water, and listen, most people, you don't roll your eyes because I know. People you, do you hit that. I, you see it happen all the time, and you hydroplane for even a half second and that can cause big problems so there are going to be issues just because the severe weather threat is out of the area doesn't mean that we're uh, done with the dangers that it leaves behind so just be a little careful absolutely we know you know as Nikki just mentioned the power outages a lot of people may not be able to access us that's why we tell you to download that first alert weather app right. and also to download the Cleveland 19 news app as well because you can literally watch in the palm of your hands mm -hmm. even if you sure. are for example in in your basement or something like that. We do have a picture okay. that was actually sent to us that we want to show you. This was sent to us by Kent State sophomore Anna wow. Huntsman. Good. And you see what's going on here. Several students are in uh, Stouffer Johnson's basement. These are the Honor College dorms. And so probably because they ho heard those sirens go off Great from tornadoes. Idea. And yeah, they had to run for cover. So absolutely, that is exactly where you want to go mm -hmm. if you hear that sound. So let's get back over to John and Sam. Yep. All right, thanks, guys. It's uh, 648, kind of wrapping things up, John. Yeah, you know, March in Ohio is 19th among the nation for tornadoes. So this is just the beginning. We've only just started, and, you know, Mars, the uh, god of war for whom March is named, is warring it out. But it uh, looks like most of this battle is pretty much wrapping Coming up. Coming in like a lion. Yeah, this oh boy, in a big way, living up day. to that reputation. I know. Well, the good news is uh, they're continuing to peel back at, yes. the, at the Storm Prediction Center, that uh, severe thunderstorm watch. So, you know, it's only Ashtabula, Trumbull County, uh, Mahoning, Portage, and Stark Portage. counties, and they're scaling that back, so Cleveland no longer included mm. in that. We've got the graphics up along with us, so you can see a little bit of everything that's going on, and you'll notice that the storms that were moving through uh, Trumbull and Mahoning counties uh, moving out. Youngstown, of course, still dealing with it. Is getting it, but it's really diminished in both coverage and intensity as it moves through Youngstown, though, that uh, the severe thunderstorm warning is warranted. I'm just thinking about you here tomorrow, and you'll be on Doppler as well, but you won't be tracking severe thunderstorms or storms of any type. It'll be snow. Yeah, we're going to yeah. go from storms so, to snow. What a battle is I going know. on here with uh, Mother Nature in the month of March. It's the battling month. And still some rain out there, of course. If yep. you're in Cleveland, you're hearing some rain, <laughs> seeing some rain, Lorraine County. It looks like a lot of you are actually still dealing with rain. I'm not seeing a ton of thunder. I'd say it's safe to say that the... Uh, Severe threat has passed. Of right. course, the horse has kind of left the barn there. But we still have inconvenient weather like rain, ponding, as Brian was mentioning. So you want to watch out for that uh, on your drive into work. Because even though it seems harmless, you can skid right off the road there. Oh, yeah. That sneaks up on you very, very quickly. All right. As we make our way through the day, um, we're headed toward rain and storms. The severe th threat diminishing or over by 10 o'clock and I think over is probably going to be key from one to five additional rain showers could pop up from time to time but we're not looking for anything severe right Sam yeah and nothing then like that after 11 o'clock after 11 o'clock a change of seasons mm -hmm. and we return to um, winter you know astronomically we are still in winter but meteorologically spring began today today what a, what a great way to start spring. Okay, do you want to carry through the, the yeah, seven days? Yes, so John was mentioning that this time tomorrow morning we might be tracking some snow for you, and that is the case. We'll have snow overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning. So you might wake up to a little, you know, powdered donut on the ground, a little powdered sugar snow. I don't think we'll see a ton of snow, but tomorrow night into Friday, we're going to have a clipper system coming through. And Jeff and I were just discussing this yesterday. We could actually see a few inches of snow Thursday right. late into Friday. 
Friday. So you've got your all seasons wardrobe out there, right? For the warmer stuff right now to the colder stuff on Friday. And then the weekend, no severe weather, but we will have cold weather on Saturday, followed by 50s and rain on Sunday. You know, how many times do you see a seven day with a 67 and then two days later, a high of 31? Only in spring and fall. Yeah, only, yeah exactly. You got it. <laughs> all, right. all right. Denise, I think we're going to go over to Denise. Yeah, I want to give you an update on RTA. I just checked. They're not reporting any problems right now. They say the red line is running as it normally would. You can see behind me uh, the Cleveland area along the interstate. We have a uh, some a few slowdowns, some slower spots, but for the most part, no major issues. We had during the height of the storm a whole lot of power lines, uh, uh, power uh, the power line poles, and also trees down in the Cleveland area, and a lot of that has been cleared up. That is the good news. Some of the outstanding problems still is in. Uh, are in the Edgewater area. We've got a road closure down wires in the Edgewater area at Madison and West 85th Street right there. Uh, also, I'm hearing that, it, that this accident is still out there, I-90 eastbound at East 72nd Street. You've got a right lane blocked in that area there, so a heads up to you if you're traveling in that direction. We've got down wires at I-271 northbound at Brainerd Road and Cedar Road. Expect to see the left lane blocked there. So uh, be aware of that there may still be some outstanding, some power outages. And uh, also want to remind you that if you come upon a stoplight that's not working, remember to treat it as a four-way stop. Duff, Tia. All right, Denise, thank you so much. We got to give it up to Damon. I mean, he's been all over yeah. in just a matter of a, yeah. a few hours. He was in Chesterland, where a roof came completely off of a building. Mm -hmm. Then he was in Lyndhurst, where the rain was really coming down. So he's been everywhere this morning. Doing his job. Yes, That's right. Is. Exactly. And now Damon Maloney live for us. He's in uh, Beechwood, I believe. Damon, uh, what do you see? Yeah, I can tell you're right, right there at Chagrin in Richmond, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you're right there, Brian. Right here, uh, we're under an awning, so we're kind of protected from the rain this morning. You can see behind me uh, the morning drivers kind of making their way through the light rain this morning. You certainly want to make sure your windshield washer uh, fluid is uh, full and that your wipers are working this morning. But uh, about an hour ago, this area was getting drenched by heavy rain showers, and we saw some pretty impressive lightning at that point in time, filling up the, the uh, night sky. Uh, but things right now running smoothly this morning, but you do want to watch out for those uh, ponding areas on the roads and uh, of course leave some distance as you get going this morning. Uh, very few power outages in the Beechwood area this morning and no damage reports. Not the case in Chesterland where we were earlier this morning where of course they saw some wind gusts move through and bring down some trees and power lines. We'll send things over to Nicole. Thanks, Damon, and we've been monitoring power outages across Northeast Ohio. The good news is that we have seen some improvement over the last 15 minutes. Now we're just under about 14 thousand customers without power right now according to Ohio Edison if you look at county still Cuyahoga County is seeing the worst is there's the worst as far as power outages they've got about 7,578 customers right now without power comment Cruz will be uh, uh, I should say Ohio Edison Cruz will be working throughout today to get that power restored uh, right now estimates are around one o'clock this afternoon Sam back over to you all right, thanks so much, Nicole. Just before 7 o'clock, I want to give you a quick update because now is the time where a lot of you leave the house, right? You're headed to work, you're headed to class. A lot of you are now in a delay, a lot of local schools because of that early morning rain. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because there's going to be a lot of ponding on the roadways and we need that water to recede. It's still raining out there. Cleveland, Lorraine County, out towards Sandusky and Norwalk. Akron, south into Wayne County, also seeing rain. One severe thunderstorm warning left, and that is out in Trumbull County, but the threat has passed for you. You're fine. It's moved into Pennsylvania. It's really only Mahoning County here in the Youngstown area where we have strong gusty wind and uh, very heavy rain moving through. By 730, you should be done with that, and the rest of this is just inconvenient old nasty rain for your Wednesday morning commute. Again, watch for those ponding issues. By 10 o'clock. We should be done with rain and thunderstorms. Get a little break and then one to five additional rain showers are going to fire up and then after 11. Yes, we're looking at the threat of snow showers overnight. So we're going to talk all about that.
coming up on our sister station, CLE 43. You don't want to miss my uh, snow totals forecast. I don't think we've done enough weather this morning. We need to talk about snow totals for Thursday. What a crazy wild ride we've had. Yeah, it's <laughs> been a long morning. But, but we're pretty much through it, That's pretty much out of the woods on this one, and uh, we'll get ready for the next round as it comes in. Thank you to Sam and John, though. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And Denise. Excellent. Excellent and don't forget job. those school closings are running right now at the bottom of your screen and also delays as well. So. That's right. Uh, of course, a big night politically. We'll get to all that on CLE 43. Make the switch right now. We'll recap what was going on with the weather as well. Click it a click. You work hard for your money. When you're hurt bad, that's when you need me. I'll make them pay. Employers of Northeast Ohio, Walk-In Urgent Care has you covered. From regular screenings to workplace injuries and everything in between, our urgent care specialists are here to help with affordable and convenient occupational health programs seven days a week. Find us at walkinurgentcare.com and get the right care today. This is a gorgeous car. Chevy is getting a lot of attention at the auto show. Check this out. This is sweet. Beautiful truck. I really like this. Very cool. I like the leather seats. Wow. Woo! I love this car. Open the gate. <laughs> this is incredible. Right now, get 1,000 auto show bonus cash on top of most current offers. But hurry, offer ends March 13th. Log on to clickchevy.com. Everyone wants to be the Cadbury Bunny, because only he brings delicious Cadbury cream eggs, while others may keep trying. No bunny knows Easter better than Cadbury. I have asthma, one of many pieces in my life. So when my asthma symptoms kept coming back on my long-term control medicine, I talked to my doctor and found a missing piece in my asthma treatment with Brio. Once daily, Brio prevents asthma symptoms. Brio's for adults with asthma not well controlled on a long-term asthma control medicine, like an inhaled corticosteroid. Brio won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Brio is specifically designed to open up airways to improve breathing for a full 24 hours. Brio contains a type of medicine that increases the risk of death from asthma problems and may increase the risk of hospitalization in children and adolescents. Brio is not for people whose asthma is well controlled on a long-term asthma control medicine, like an inhaled corticosteroid. Once your asthma is well controlled, your doctor will decide if you can stop Brio and prescribe a different asthma control medicine, like an inhaled corticosteroid. Do not take Brio more than prescribed. See your doctor if your asthma does not improve or gets worse. Ask your doctor if 24-hour Brio could be a missing piece for you. Learn more about better breathing at mybrio.com. No, definitely not. No, no, no. Hello, the general. Low cost auto insurance with low payments, choice of payment due date, and immediate proof of insurance. Yes. Don't settle for a loser. Get your anonymous online quote with low payments and ride with the general. For a great low rate you can get online, go to the general and save some time. With real cheeses and Italian seasoning, Marco's gives you the best of the zest. Try our new Zesty 5 cheese or Zesty meatball and pepperoni for just $12.99 at marcos.com. From sniffles to broken bones and 16 locations, open seven days a week. Walk-in urgent care is a convenient and cost-saving alternative to the ER. Find us at walkinurgentcare.com and get the right care today. Walk-in urgent care. Quick, quality care for the entire family. The Cleveland Auto Show, February 24th through March 5th at the IX Center. Good morning, it's Wednesday, March 1st, 2017.